short talk. So um, I'm Amar Kapadia. I'm a co-founder at a startup called Arna Networks. And the title of my talk is Nephew at the Edge. And as we will see, Nephew uses Kubernetes. And it's especially suitable for the edge. So it's almost a perfect talk for uh, Kubernetes on edge day. So first, the problem statement. What are the new problems that come up when you try to do edge workload, for example, a network service, orchestration, and management? And in my view, three things come up. First is the scale. As we all know, the edges can be massive in comparison to, to say, the cloud in terms of tens of thousands of locations, hundreds of thousands of devices. And that's the first challenge. The second is the dependence on the infra that a workload has. For example, if you take a network service such as radio area network that often requires GPUs or DPUs. And in so, you have to configure the infra to suit the workload requirements. And the third is just heterogeneity. Uh, the edge is heterogeneous. There are hyperscalers providing edge solutions, um, software companies providing CAS solutions for private uh, edge implementations. There's just a lot of compute, CAS, storage, networking. If you look at the diversity, it's massive. Um, so how uh, this was actually a, a new in piece of information to me that Kubernetes is, is more than just container orchestration. I had just assumed that. And what I learned over time is that Kubernetes is, is a general purpose control plane that just happens to do container orchestration first. It can do a lot more. So what if we could use Kubernetes for the problem that I just outlined? And that's exactly Nephew. Uh, by a raise of hands, how many people are familiar with Nephew? OK, so a few people. So hopefully this will be new for a lot of people. So it's a new Linux Foundation project started this summer. So it's very new. And it's a Kubernetes-based, intent-driven system. I'm not going to read the whole thing. That can be used for network functions and edge computing applications and the underlying infrastructure. So you can set up the cloud and edge infrastructure with the initial configurations and then deploy and manage network services and workloads on top. So why Nephew? Nephew solves the three problems that I outlined quite well. So first is scale. It's meant for multi-site, so you can have lots and lots of uh, clusters, um, on demand or private. Your network functions or workloads can be interconnected, straddling all these sites. They can be edge or cloud, doesn't matter. Intent driven, this is a huge piece of Nephew where it's based on configuration as data, not code. Because I infrastructure as code tends to have imperative embedded in the descriptor. And that makes it very sort of uh, brittle and, and difficult to use. And day zero configurations are automatically derived. There's a, I'll, I'll walk you through it. There's a concept of mutation where your initial intent is mutated to generate something that the end cluster can consume. And day zero configurations are part of it. Workload infra dependency, it's useful for both workloads and infra. <coughs> and it's meant to be heterogeneous. Um, so like I said, Nephew uses Kubernetes. There are three key pillars in Nephew. All three pillars use custom resources. And under the custom resources, they have operators. So it's a standard Kubernetes design pattern. The custom resources are in three buckets. First, our cloud infra resource automation. So that deals with the infrastructure layer. The next is workload resource automation network functions, or edge computing applications. And that orchestrates and manages um, applications. And the third is workload configuration. So this third pillar can configure your network functions or edge computing applications using um, whatever mechanism, whatever protocol is required. It could In the network functions, it could be Yang NetConf for 
edge computing applications that could be REST. Declarative is a huge part of Nephew, and it's an underlying principle. So there are three pieces. The first is you design your intent. So I'm not going to go through the whole thing, but you design your intent that describes what you want. The intent then gets mutated to something that the end cluster can consume. And the mutation is based on a series of operators. So the operators can say, oh, you know, this cluster is small, so let me adjust the scaling factor accordingly. Then you deploy the intent. And then the third is very important where you have a control loop that monitors the, uh, the deployment and constantly reconciles it with your intent. So this is, again, a key part of intent driven where you have constant reconciliation. And below that, you have the various clusters. CI-CD at scale is also baked into the project, so it's inherent. There's uh, projects called KPT. KPT does packaging of Kubernetes resources. And Porch, which is a wrapper around Git. And through KPT and, and Porch, everything is basically going into Git, and you get CI automatically. And for CD, there's a project used called ConfigSync, and where the edge pulls the configuration from the central Nephew cluster. It, it need not be config sync. It can be Argo CD, it can be Flux, it's really uh, whatever you want. And because of the two mechanisms I mentioned, the CI CD at scale and constant reconciliation, day zero, day one, and day two are handled in a uniform manner. So whether it's configuration drift or changing configuration, both are handled. Use cases, we have a multi-vendor edge service brokering, where you can broker between various edge providers for an infra, 5G networks, for example, Open RAN or 5G core, and edge computing applications. Um, I have a demo. I don't have much time, so I'm just going to make some quick points. So on the left is the Nephew cluster. The Nephew cluster is centralized. And on the right, we are showing the operations. We are going to do both infra orchestration and we are going to do workload orchestration, both. And you'll see how easy it is. So first, so on the right, there is a KRM file, Kubernetes resource file, that is describing what we want to do on the infra. So it's, you see it's very easy, it's simple, it's just saying what is the repository from which it should uh, fetch the resource. We want AWS EKS and the package type is infra. And there's a couple of steps that are done to apply the, the KPT package and then to approve it. So now it's, it's applied, now we are going to approve it. I'm, I'm going to speed through this. Uh, it's only a 10 minute talk. And what you see is that the cluster is coming up. So all we did is we described the resource file and we um, uh, approved it, committed and approved it, and now the cluster is getting deployed. And now we go to the application or the network service on top. And that's also, it's describing the repository. It's a DNS caching application, and the package type is workload. So here what you'll see is the day zero configuration mutation is also going to happen. Based on the cluster type, it's actually going to mutate day zero configurations. I'll just show you real quick. And again, I apologize, I'm flying through this. Um, So what you see is the cluster we deployed is a small fixed site. And based on the small fixed site, I know what kind of uh, scaling I want. So the day zero configuration is going to mutate accordingly. And that's what gets applied. So we apply it, then approve it, same process. 
And what you'll see is the, the cluster is finally up, and the application is up as well. And you can see the full demo, so um, that's the link. And please get involved if this project is interesting to you. Here are some resources. And you can join us at the One Summit in uh, Seattle in November. And with that, um, thank you. Do we have time for questions or? Any quick questions? Here, okay. okay. with bare metal? The project has the ability. Uh, you would have to develop a controller. So far, nobody has stepped up to do that controller. But in, in theory, you could. Okay, thank you.